Kendall Jr., the Boss Man Show. What you know about Savannah Hay Tiger's head coach, Horace Wise, and the Boss Man Show. Coach, how is down Savannah, man? Uh, as of the day, they're pretty good, man. We uh, play some good basketball in the uh, middle of the road and just keep grinding and um, trying to take care of the next game. So if we let, uh, they get better, but right now they're pretty good. I uh, hear that, Coach. Now, you're eight winning MIAC play, right on seven game win streak right now. What's been the key factors for your win streak so far, Coach, in your hot start to conference play in the MIAC there? Well, I think the guys are playing, you know, how we want to play. And, you know, we, 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 we've we been very fortunate to uh, keep the game up in you know, the home team, how we play. So, uh, we fast and uh, we try to get early shots and uh, we try to rebound and we, you know, we try to press press uh, the opposing team. So we try to get the tempo up and um, try to fatigue teams out by the end of the, in, end of the game. So uh, it's been working. And uh, But, you know, the rest of this one is going to be pretty tough. we got a lot of uh, guys that we need to play that's going to be at the top of the, top of the conference. So uh, we'll see if it's real. So, Coach, this, the non-conference late, uh, how much do you retreat your team's uh, start in conference to going out playing tough non-conference schedules uh, against quality opponents uh, that present challenges to you that you you know may see again uh, during conference conference play. Do you feel like that's a a positive for you to play a tough non conference schedule to get you ready for conference play? Well, I mean, uh, I guess to a certain degree, you know, I didn't um, I didn't expect the, the non conference schedule to be that tough, but uh, if you look at Virginia number two and I think Cincinnati round six and Texas Tech ten, you know, I didn't think that we'd be playing the injury ten program in the country, but it was good in the sense that it was difficult for us to execute. And a lot of times I just told the guys, hey, man, just focus on trying to execute. And not necessarily worrying about, you know, what the uh, score is. Just constantly try to do what we do, uh, whether it was effective or not. Because, you know, we were going to change our style and we were going to try to come into the league and play a little bit better. And, uh, you know, basically I told them, I used the analogy that, you know, that's not the jungle that we belong in. But it, it's a jungle that we could use uh, to get better. And, you know, being in the MEAC is the jungle that we're supposed to be in. And, uh you know, we could be efficient and effective in this jungle. So for the first nine games, I think we've been uh, very efficient. We just got to keep getting getting better because uh, the competition is going to get better and the challenges are going to get uh, a little stronger. We got Harsh Bodex and Nelson Michelle, Tigers head coach. Now, Coach, looking at your roster, you have a great mix of basketball leading the way. You both across the way, prepare, prepare for March Madness, hopefully, Coach. So you feel you can use that you know, offensive to me I can beyond what your experience you have on your roster? Well, I mean, we got some seniors on the roster, and, uh, you know, uh, we got a couple of you guys that's been in the program for five years so you know a lot of times I challenge him um you know when we having some dips in the game that hey man you know uh you know the expectation for you is a little higher because you've been you've been in the league you've been you've been with the program so uh they didn't see a lot so it should be anything that should r- rattle them or their emotions should get too um been out of shape so um yeah we got we got some older guys uh uh that should help us, but uh, you know, I, I got a lot of respect for these guys in the, in this league, um, and nobody's gonna roll over. I don't care what their record is at this particular time because uh, either they're trying to play for a championship or they're trying to play for momentum uh, to get into the uh, MIAC tournament so that they could be successful. So uh, it's gonna be a tough ride for us, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll be up for the challenge because uh, you know, it's a lot of big coaches in this league, and I got a lot of respect for all of them. Now, Coach, in, in uh, doing some prep, Jr. and I were looking at the team stats, and what about it was uh, teams like you guys shot well, and attacking the glass is something that you excel at as well. So are those two elements that you and the staff identified to uh, pay a lot of attention to detail with this season? Yeah, I think attacking the glass is one of them. I mean, we want to take a lot of shots. Um, we want to tempo the game. Um, you know, typically a, a basketball game, if played at a normal pace, you know, teams get between, you know, 55 and 65 shots. Um, so, I mean, we want to try to get around, you know, if we could get 80 plus, you know, close to 90, that would be great. But in order to do that, we have to not turn the basketball over and try to force the other team to turn the ball over. So attacking the glass is one of those. Things. And then um, valuing the basketball and trying to create some turnovers on the other side to create a, create additional um, possession for us. Sharing the basketball is even better, you know, um, you know, I definitely would like to get more assists. You know, it would be nice to get, you know, 20-plus assists a game. That means that we, we're sharing the basketball. I think we do share it enough. Um, we can and get better at that, you know, where guys are not um, taking plays off on the offense and then saying, hey, I'm not going to get this ball because I'm making a cut. But a lot of times we need to make cuts. We need to make uh, screens. 
even though we're not going to get the basketball, but it frees up our teammates. So if they trust one another, knowing that, hey, you know, I might still get this ball to make this cut or set this screen, uh, that makes us better. And coach for Morgan State this weekend, Coach, what are the things you emphasize to your team as you get ready for this match with Morgan State when you're me at Riles this weekend? Well, we've been scoring points. And, uh, you know, we got to pick up the defense a little bit. You know, you know I tell you, got that score, score, score. But in certain situations during the game, we got to kind of, you know, take a little right and, and trying to uh, – Stop! Uh, stop the opposing team from scoring. And I think when uh, we lost the game up to Morgan uh, in early uh, January, it was because you know we didn't get a defense stop at the end of the game. Um, but you know now you know fortunately we learned from the game and against Morgan they got two two solid players that you know if you don't pay attention to them they could get thirty possibly forty points. So those are the two things that we're gonna have to try to uh, defend their two best players. Uh, in certain situations, um, not allowing them to score or hurt us. Uh, in certain situations, um, at the end of the game, one guy got the ball and we should have got it out of his hand. We didn't, and uh, he made us pay. Now, Coach, for those listening that may not be uh, fully aware of the MEAC, can you speak to the, the quality of teams, play, and coaching in the league so that they can kind of get a feel for uh, what you guys face night in, night out? I mean, you, you. I mean, from top to bottom, it's pretty good. You know, I mean, um, you got Todd Bozeman at Morgan. You know, uh, was head coach at California, Coach Jason Kid. Uh, you know, you got the Buck at Hampton. Uh, he's been to the NCAA playoffs. Uh, you know, maybe two, three times. You got Lavelle Moten at um, North Carolina Central. Um, you know, he he, he runs a great program. Um, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Roger uh, North Norfolk. Uh, has done a tremendous job. So, I mean, like I said before, I got a lot of respect for these guys. Uh, you know, I, I definitely don't take them lightly, and I know that they don't take uh, Savannah State lightly, no matter what our record is. And, um, you know, we're a one-and-done league. Not, a, uh, not necessarily, I mean, a one-bid league, uh, where meaning that we, we have to depend on the automatic bid. We're not going to get an at-large bid. So, uh, it's a lot of guys uh, strategizing and and uh, trying to figure one another out, and trying to, you know, it's a it's a chess match, and um, and that's you know that's what I tell my players that you know we we've had success the first nine games, but uh, guys are making adjustments, guys are watching films, uh, you know, guys are looking at stats, they, you know, they they are looking at film, trying to figure out where the week five four or something. Like that. So uh, I mean, it's a great league. I mean, guys guys uh, don't take days off, don't take plays off. So it's going to be tough for us uh, the remaining of the season. Well, Coach Rodney, we definitely appreciate your nominating. We're definitely looking for you guys and for you guys going forward. We're going to show you right here at George Woodward State. We're based out of those coaches. Definitely forcing you guys. Do you think this is hopefully out to you again around Rodney at this time, Coach? Well, man, like I said, all my guys, man, we just take care of what's in front of them. And uh, like you said, we're going we gonna to prepare for Morgan State, and that's all we're going to focus on is Morgan State. You know, once that result has come in, um, you know, we'll we'll digest that result, and then we'll move on to the next one. The most important one is um, uh, Morgan State. If we take care of those things in front of us, then, uh, you know, March Atkins will take care of itself. Yes, indeed, well, Coach. Thank you so much for your time today, and good luck. Good luck. Talk to you soon, man. I appreciate it, John. John, thank you for having me. Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathletics.com consulting.com once again www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L Williams 24 or you can call me at 404 404 
542-607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. JR the Boss Man Show. We're about to be joined by the Wright State Raiders head coach Scott Nagy. Coach Nagy, how are things going with you up there in Dayton, man? Very good, very good. I'm, I hope it warms up soon, but but uh, we're playing good basketball. Yes, indeed, Coach. You, you just got a chance to the Horizon League play, beats beat Youngstown State there. So, Coach, what was the key start for you and your team as you got off to the hostile starting conference play, being to on top of the Horizon League descendants at, at the moment here? Uh, mostly, mostly good defense. We, you know, we don't really have a uh, like a major score. You know, our leading score out of things getting about thirteen a game. We've got about six or seven guys that are all getting between that and about nine points a game. So we've got a lot of good players that, uh, you know, can score. We, we don't have a, a guy that's a key on, but, but we've been really good defensively. That's kind of helped us get off to a good start. So, Coach, we uh, we always like to, to find out about the non-conference schedule from coaches such as yourself and how that non-conference play helps get you ready for the conference play. So do you find playing a tough non-conference schedule against quality opponents um, helps to present challenges for the team that they might see during the conference play of your uh, conference portion of your season? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, to be honest with you, the, 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 you know, the scheduling part of it, particularly the non-conference scheduling, which is what we do. Obviously the conference does our conference schedule, but the non-conference schedule is probably the most difficult thing that we do. And the better you get, the harder it is, obviously. I mean, it's hard to get good guarantee games because those teams don't want to pay a bunch of money and get beat. And, and so uh, it, it just is, it's, it's, a, it's a tough deal. It really is. You know, and, and everybody's kind of cut short about it, trying to put the best schedule together that they can. But you have to play a good enough one that it helps your RPI. But you don't want to play a so good a one that you get beat up all the time. And you don't want to be on the road all the time. That's been the toughest thing. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to, to kind of balance that out and have as many home games as road games. Folks, we got Scott Nagy and the boss man, sort the White State Raiders head coach here. Coach, looking at your roster, coach, you have a great mix of up the class and some young up, up and coming guys. Now, you will go to the play, you know, play so that way hopefully prepare for the March Madness coach. You feel like the devil is going to get out of the way people, which you need to help out for sure. That's tough for us to leave. You got Oakland, these guys are playing well, but you feel like they're experience your experience your team. They got you to be able to help you move forward past, past these teams. Yeah, you know, we, we don't have great depth on I mean, we're playing pretty much seven guys, and three of those guys are freshmen. Now, those three freshmen uh, have played a lot of minutes for us, and uh, one of them has started every game for us. Uh, a couple of the other guys have started some games for us, but they, but they get to play a lot. And so, uh, you know, this time of year, you just don't even consider them to be freshmen anymore. And uh, they, they play very well. We have some good leaders. We have, some, uh, you know, good senior and, and Grant Benzinger, and then we're pretty young, really, and, and uh, you know, we're excited about it, recruiting's going well, um, and, and uh, you know, things are looking good for the future, but but I think that particularly our freshmen have gotten a lot better, and, and we don't consider them freshmen anymore, and so I think that, that they can help us do what we want to do. So, Coach, when we were looking at your team stats uh, to get ready for the interview, we, uh, we noticed that... Uh, Sharing the basketball, attacking the glass, those are two things that seem to be um, elements of the game that, that you and the staff have identified to pay a lot of attention to uh, during the course of the season. Is that accurate? Well, yeah. I mean, we, we would like to share it. Now, it's unusual, you know, for us to be 18-7. and seven. We have more turnovers than we do assists, and uh, we're not a great offensive team. We've gotten better. Uh, we were really bad early, and then we picked up uh, a point guard at semester, Cole Gentry, who's really helped. And really, ever since Cole joined our basketball team, 
uh, it's kind of when we took off. We got our first road win at Toledo, and then we really started to play well on the road. That's what helps us. Uh, uh, we're, we're not a great passing team, but but uh, we don't have a we don't have a bunch of ball hogs. That's for sure. We have guys that really share and, and care about each other, and uh, you know are just focused on their own points. Uh, and, and and really, we're kind of undersized, but we've been a pretty good rebounding team. We've got a bunch of tough kids. And coach, as you prepare for a Green Bay and Milwaukee this weekend, going to the home stand you have coming up here for you guys. What you shout out to your team to get team and as they prepare, watching the film and, and getting get scouting these teams so they can it can be focused on the play and like any these teams coming in who are gonna for you guys that have been at the top of the rising standings here. Well, it's you know, for us it's the same every time and, and uh, even when we have a weekend uh, where we're gonna play two teams we we just focus on the next team so we lock in on Green Bay. And it's it's most of it is defense and rebounding. I mean that's what we spend most of our time on, uh, getting prepared for them, making sure that, that we understand the tendencies of, of the individual players, and then certainly what they run. Uh, but but a lot of it just comes down to defensive principles, things that we work on every day, and then we just talk about rebounding and, and making sure that we get back and, and get in front of them so that we don't give up layups. Coach, I've always been curious to know how um, a man in your position goes about managing his time when you, you have to uh, take into consideration the, the student-athlete and the academic side of the equation in, in conjunction with the athletic side of it. So when you have to prepare for multiple games in one week, and then you also have academic commitments to, that, that the students have, how do you go about doing that and making, I mean, making your schedule out? It's got to be very difficult to match those two things up, no? Uh, you know, I, maybe for some people it is, but, but I'll tell you, when we get to this time of year, uh, we, we really don't practice any more than an hour and a half uh, on any given day. I mean, we just don't – we're not in the gym for three hours just practicing, beating our guys up, particularly with our team now playing seven guys. I mean, we have to keep those guys healthy. And so we, we, we do what we can do in terms of getting them prepared and, and make sure that they're going to play tough. And then we and then we got to make sure their legs are fresh, their minds are fresh. And so we're really not going that long this time of year. And we're fortunate we have a great practice facility. We're able uh, to practice in the mornings. Uh, you know, our practice time is like 10 to 1. And so uh, usually by noon every day, we're done. And our guys are off to class. You know, we get our film work done before that. And, and uh, it's great for the coaching staff, too, because I, I get to go home early. So then to, to spin off of that, when you guys – um, get all your prep done. Uh, the, the the guys have their schoolwork done. Then you get get into these games, these Horizon League games. For for our listeners who aren't necessarily as familiar with the Horizon League as Jr. and I are, what are I guess your your opinions of, uh, or if you could share with them the, the quality of play, the quality of coaching, um, the, the quality teams that you have in the league. So maybe they when they're watching these uh, teams throughout the course of the rest of the season they have a better understanding from one of the members of the, the, the coaching uh, group of that league. They can, they can say, wow, okay, now I see what coach is talking about, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. What is it with the Horizon League that makes it so special? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, is, uh, I think most people consider the league to be down a little bit. Uh, uh, but, but I think the reason is, is, is we have seven coaches that are in their first or second year. Uh, at their school, and so you know they're they're trying to establish their cultures, recruit their players, build their programs, but very good coaches. And uh, so you know I think that, that there's just been a lot of turnover in our league. Uh, you know, Lake State's been one of them, and so we're trying to develop our culture just like that. Uh, but but it's going to be you know you can see particularly with the young players and how people are recruiting. Uh, you know I think that that the, you know the goal of the Rising League is certainly to get it back. You know some people thought we lost Butler and then we lost Malpo. That the, you know that the league just won't be the same, and I don't think that anybody uh, that's left is thinking that way. You know, our desire is to, is, is to end up building a program like like those two teams did. Coach, thank you. Thank you for doing a great job. I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm 20, I'm 20 over there. I tell you, you did a great job at Wright State, Coach. You know, it's in my mind. I'm glad you're there. But they are there for a great day up, up to standards as it should be. Because you're, you're doing a great job, Coach, and I really appreciate you coming on the show as always. Yeah, well, thank you guys for having me. All right, folks, it's Scott Nagy on the Boss Man Show. From Wright State, the Raiders here on the Boss Man Show. Welcome to the Horizon League.
all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B L U B E R R Y, prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. Hello, college basketball fans. This is Donnie Tyndall, former head basketball coach, and we're getting ready to have a top three with Tyndall with JR the boss man and John, myself, as we analyze the college basketball season team by team, break down stats and facts, and give you all the basketball scoop across the country on a weekly basis. We hope you'll join us and look forward to talking hoops with you on the boss man show. Gerald, the boss man show. We have to join by a great coach. He's at the Austin P. State Governors up at Clarksville playing with the good ball right now. It's very good to have him in Austin P. First year coach there, Coach Pat Figger. Coach, highlight from Clarksville, man. How's it going up there, man? Yeah, it, all's good right now. You know, um, we're, we're two thirds of the way through the, uh, you know, the conference season, and uh, we, we, we've got our back stretch of the season coming, but. Uh, you know, so far through the first, uh, you know, two thirds of the year, uh, as a as a as the coach here, I, I can't complain too much, guys. Hey, coach, nine and three conference play, currently around a four game winning in the street, coach. What has been the key factors for you, coach, in the hot the conference play and the fact that you've been winning the winning streak of four games? What's been going good for these last four games, coach? Well, you know, the thing is, is that uh, yeah, our team know. over the course of the season. Uh, from the start till now, they've just gotten to know one another better, number one. Um, you know, we've got to figure out what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. And, and uh, you know, right now, my strengths are uh, our kids play really hard, number one. And uh, number two, uh, I've got a really good uh, combination at the four and the five and, and Avery Ugba and uh, Terry Taylor, who are, you know, uh, first and second in rebounding in the league. Uh, they're both top five scorers in the league, both of them, you know, averaging 17, 18 points a game in league play. And, uh, you know, we're leading uh, in, in, in rebounding in the league. We're tops in, in, in offensive rebounding in the league. Just and, and, you know, we're up there in tops in the league in, 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 in defense. So um, all the, the, the gritty stuff that you need to win games, what my guys are doing right now. Coach, we're going to dig into to Terry and Avery a little bit more as we go, but I wanted to speak with you a little bit now about the, the culture that you brought in as the, the new head coach and, and how you feel that's taking hold. I mean, obviously the guys are, are buying into the system that you're bringing. You're, you're doing well in conference play. Um, you're out to 14-10 uh, and 10 record throughout the course of the season so far. So obviously the guys are, as you indicated, uh, learning how to play together within your system and they're, they're buying into that culture. So how have you been able to accomplish this 
and and is it something that uh, is gratifying for you to see? Yeah, no, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, guys, we had four returning players, um, and those four players weren't uh, weren't the, the the front line contributors of last year's team, and you know, uh, we, we brought we brought you know a bunch of guys in, and and uh, the one thing I, I I don't know now if I look back on it if it was very smart uh, or very dumb at the time. But but we played the hardest non-conference schedule that we could possibly play. You know, we went we went to Vanderbilt. Um, we, we went to Virginia, which you guys all know is 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 like the number one, number two team in the country now. Um, we went to Oklahoma State. We went to Illinois. Uh, we went to Evansville. We played Western Kentucky, who's you know one of the top thirty teams in the country. We played Miami of Ohio. We played UNC Asheville, who was picked to win the league. So, you know, through that scheduling and that non-con, uh, our record wasn't great, but we were playing teams in other leagues, especially the BCS and, you know, Missouri Valley, Conference USA. We were taking on some of the better teams in the country, and over time we kept getting better and better and better with it. And by the end of the year, you know, we had beaten Troy. We had beaten Miami of Ohio. Uh, we had some, some decent non-conference wins. And once we stepped into league play, you, you know, we weren't facing maybe some of the sides that we faced in the non-conference. And, and we kept trying to pound the ball inside, pound the ball inside, and really try to defend and things like that. And once we got into league play, our non-conference schedule prepared us for the league. And, and so – uh, our guys have gained confidence throughout league play, and you know we're sitting here um, uh, currently in third place in Ohio Valley, behind two really good basketball teams in Belmont and Murray State, and uh, you know one game behind Murray for second, two behind Belmont for first. So, um, kids have really bought in, man. I, I, I'm uh, very blessed that uh, I've got a really good group of guys who are believing in what we're what we're doing here right now. Hey, Coach John, Mitch, I want to talk to you about. Terry and Averill, how big have they been for your team this year, Coach? How just their about what they bring to the table and what are they contributing to for the team as a whole? Because I feel like these guys energize the team. The guys see these guys, I feel like working out early, they're preparing, they're playing like car like crazy for you. How does it affect the galvanizing of the guys and those who guys perform such a high level for you guys this season so far? Well, they're a problem for other teams. Uh, you know, guys, we play very unique, and uh, when I mean by unique. We're very old school, uh, points in the paint, post up, um, you know, throw the ball inside, play at the rim. We don't shoot threes. We don't ball screen. We don't do all the, you know, where everybody in the, in the country has gone to, you know, mimicking kind of the Golden State Warriors with the, uh, you know, small ball and all that type of stuff. We've went polar opposite. We, 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 we're kind of football – smash mouth, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, throwing it at the rim and, and posting up, and those two guys are, have, have been tremendous for us. Uh, you know, uh, Terry Taylor's leading us in mostly all statistical categories. Uh, there's not another freshman outside of, I think, Marvin Bagley and maybe someone else who leads the team in scoring and rebounding, and uh, he's having as good of a freshman year as anybody in the country. And then Avery Ugba, once we've gotten into conference play, you know, uh, he's hit us another, another level. Uh, you know, he's had 28 points back-to-back nights on the road. He's had 25 rebounds in two games. Uh, you know, he went on the road to Jacksonville State and had 35-17. and 17. So it's just teams are having to guard that every single possession. And what it ends up doing, it ends up putting a lot of fouls on people. And uh, we lead the league in free throw attempts. We lead the league in offensive rebounding. So everything we do is right at around a foot from the rim. So it, it, it puts a lot of teams in harm's way. So, Coach, as we look at your roster, we see that you've got a good blend of experienced guys and some up and upcoming underclassmen that you can mix and match a little bit. You know, you don't always have as much control over uh, the roster as you like with guys leaving and um, other extenuating circumstances. But – in a perfect world, would, would that be the, the mix that you'd try to 
to keep would be having you know a few experienced players at the the, the top leading the charge with some nice up and coming guys to, to kind of mix and match off the bench and maybe uh, in spot starts here and there. Yeah, no, no, no question. I I, I think the one thing that um, that 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 uh, you always need is you need experience um, as far as age wise, not necessarily from uh, uh, playing together wise, but you need older guys if you're going to win. And, uh, you know, when you're young, 18, 19 years old, uh, you, you don't know the ins and outs of, of, of the game as, as well as you would if you're 21, 22 years old. Now, the one thing about our team, um, you know, going into this season, we were the fifth most inexperienced team in the country as far as minutes played. Now, uh, we've got older guys, but they hadn't played minutes together. So uh, I, think only can, I think only Kentucky, Mississippi Valley State, Pittsburgh, and, and some other team had less experience than we did. So you put all that together, uh, the team has really had to learn on the fly. And the, the more they get more comfortable with me and the more they've gotten comfortable with one another, uh, even though we have some older guys, um, you know, if it, it's playing together, the more they play together, the better off we are. Now, Coach, you got a big road game early State coming up and a big one against Illinois. Uh, so I just want to know, as you prepare for the, this, this this week, still the big two tough road games, Coach. What are you emphasizing to your team about staying poised, staying ready, taking a day at a time, focusing on every detail in film session and in the game, keeping the keeping the game plan discipline to win these games on the road? Uh, you know, we've got uh, – this is our last uh, road swing uh, of the season. So, you know, we've, we've had to go uh, two consecutive trips in, in this league where we've had to play four straight road games. And uh, so our guys have gotten experience with that, and they understand the, the, the things how to win on the road. Uh, they have understand that you can't turn the ball over. They understand that, that you've got to get into the, the – the backside of your offense. They've learned that, you know, you got to rebound, you can't foul, and, and you got to win all those hustle stats. And, uh, you know, I feel good about our team right now. Um, you know, obviously it's a daunting task to go on the road and win, but, you know, I, I, I think we're going to be able to, to go to, to Murray and give our best shot to them and go to Eastern and do the same. I, I, I expect our team to be playing with a lot of confidence right now. Now, Coach, can you speak to the level of play in the Ohio Valley Conference, um, the, the quality of the teams, the quality of the coaches, the quality of the league as a whole? Um, and, you know, you talk about these road games, and, and it's always difficult to, to play on the road and win regardless of conference, but it seems like, uh, you know, the Ohio Valley Conference is kind of stepping up a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, you've got um, uh, – you've got – teams that are, are leagues experienced right now. Uh, you know, Belmont's an older team. Uh, you know, Rick Ray, or excuse me, uh, Rick Bird has, you know, 800 wins. He's seen it all, done it all. Uh, you know, Murray State has, has historically been the, um, the Kentucky or Kansas of, 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 the, of the Ohio Valley. Um, so they get everybody's best shot. You know, Ray Harper's at Jacksonville State, who's been, who's taken two different teams to the NCAA tournament, who's won national championships uh, at the Division II and the NAI level. And so, you know, Jack State's got a veteran group of guys. And then, you know, Steve Payne at uh, Tennessee Tech has got an unbelievably good experienced team. Uh, you know, Dana uh, Ford at Tennessee State, you know, his, his team's one of the most physical teams in the league. And, and so, you know, your upper half of your league is really good. And then, you know, the teams that right now are in the middle of the pack or down towards the end, they've got a lot of experience, too. And night in and night out, whether it's Moorhead State, whose record may not be what people t take as a good team, they're right into the, all the games to the final possession. And, and uh, you know, Southeast Missouri State has a kid named um, uh, Denzel Ware, and, and, and a Brewer kid 
um, that are as talented any two players as, as they're on the league. And so it, the league's really, really competitive. And you've got guys like Rick Ray, who was the head coach at uh, Mississippi State, and Jay Spoonhauer, who uh, pl- uh, coached with his legendary fa- father, Charlie Spoonhauer, at UNLV in St. Louis. So the pedigrees and, and the blood and, and the job Anthony Stewart's done at Tennessee Martin, you know, uh, last year, um, you know, has it, been phenomenal. So there's a lot of parity and a lot of good coaching, uh, and it's a fun league. You know, the guard play is really, really good. You know, um, the, the, the games are entertaining, uh, the scoring and stuff like that. It's an explosive league. It's a fun league to watch if you're a fan. And, and it's an underrated league with the guard talent. I mean, it's incredible in this league. Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, you know what? I, I, I told you off there, I'm very happy for you. I'm glad that you're having success up at Austin P. Uh, I used to hang up in Clarksville a lot when I was at Tennessee State. I would hang up there a lot at Austin P. So I know my way around a little Clarksville a little bit there. Riverside Drives, North Second, Mary, and the Clarksville. I know my way around pretty good up there, Coach. So I'm happy that you're having good things in my old stopping grounds up there at Austin P. Well, that's good to hear, man. It, uh, you know, Riverside's still the same, but I think, uh, you know, everything else is kind of changing. Clarksville's one of the fastest growing cities. Um, you know, in the United States, that this whole Nashville area is just booming from Murfreesboro to Clarksville down south into, you know, Franklin and all that area. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing cities in the entire United States. And, you know, there's a lot of good jobs and, and stuff like that. It's a really good place to live. This, you know, no state tax, fellas. That's a great sale now. You don't have to give Uncle uh, Sam that that money back here in his state. So yeah, uh, all, those, coach. all those places, all those places that Jr. just listed, Coach, you can bet that he that he had a honey at each one of those spots, right? There's, that's how he knows those spots. He, he knows. A, 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 a man's always got to keep his keep his uh, you know his his things in different areas of the of the of the cities now. Hey, Coach. Yeah, listen. Old, old, you got his own Riverside. Is this still there, Coach? The old trolley, is it still there? It's still there. That's yeah, it's still there. <laughs> no, hey, hey oh, and, 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 the, uh, and, the, and the dinner rolls are still uh, delicious. Oh, yes, indeed. I was going to give you my free dessert on Wednesday, I think it was. Dessert on Wednesday. <laughs> I can't forget that. Dessert on Wednesday. <laughs> Yes, indeed. But, Coach, I said, I, 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 I'm so happy for you, Coach. We got to do this again real soon. Hopefully, you all keep doing well. Hopefully, hopefully you got a good run in the WCC tournament up there in Evansville. Hope to talk to you again real soon, Coach. Coach. Well, I appreciate uh, always being on the show. And, uh, you know, we got we got a six-game gauntlet left here. We're on the back third of the season. So, um, hopefully, the Govs will keep playing well. And, uh, you know, we can make a good run in Evansville and see what happens from there. Yes, indeed. Coach, thank you again. Be blessed, Coach. Talk to you real soon, man. Always good to hear the show. All right, brother. You take care. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www. 
www.draftdayconsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby, and it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. Man show big week college basketball on the boss man show but to go up the murray kentucky way up the road i say 524 way up the road there but we're gonna talk to him anyway though we see conference number two in the conference right now two right now coach Batman, man of the murray state race was cosmic man how things are there murray kentucky man uh, it's a, a great week to be a racer i appreciate you having me on uh, we got a great opportunity here on thursday against a very good austin p team on national tv and be great exposure for our program. Yes, indeed, Coach. You know, you're 10-2, Coach, conference play. Currently a five-game winning streak there, Coach. So talk to me, Coach. What's been the key factors for you in conference play, the hard start in conference play, and, Coach, the one streak you're on? What's been going on with you guys as you won five in a row here? Well, I think you got to start with our two seniors, Jonathan Stark and Terrell Miller. Uh, they've just done a terrific job of helping to change the culture of a program. Uh, Jonathan uh, is just a, a relentless worker. He lives in the gym. I uh, just went over 2,000 career points uh, on Saturday. Uh, he's over 550 assists. Uh, he's just had a, a, a monster senior year. Uh, but we've had we've had a, a team that's been a lot of fun. Coach, very unselfish, uh, very efficient offensively, and for, and for the most part, we've been a pretty solid defensive team as well. So, Coach, I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the non-conference slate and how that plays into the conference uh, block of games that you guys have. So, do you feel it's a it's a 
positive for you to play a tough non-conference schedule, uh, thereby exposing your players to some situations that are going to present challenges to them that they'll probably see again during conference play? Oh, we, we certainly think so, and and we were able to challenge ourselves non-conference. We uh, we had Middle Tennessee and and Auburn both at home. Uh, unfortunately, weren't able to win, but I but I certainly think we got better from those games and, and prepared us for conference play. Uh, we had big road wins at Wright State, who's leading the Horizon Conference. Uh, had a road win at Illinois State. Uh, you know, and you know, you hope those uh, challenging non-conference games, uh, some of the different styles you might see, you hope that helps prepare you. Uh, for the grind of the conference season. Coach, looking at your roster, Coach, you have a good mix of upperclassmen and lower classmen as well. Did you go to the conference to play, Coach, and prepare for the, the OVC tournament coming up here shortly? I know you're not looking too far ahead, but just got to think about that and roll a little bit here. The players you got, 10 and 2, you got them in your system. You got guys learning about from the upperclassmen, Coach. So how you feel about your team going forward, knowing that you got – that's what you want to achieve every year, kind of have a, that balance of flow where you get guys graduating and you bring two more guys in, three more guys in. So you can always keep the program going and stay steady. About that's trying to build. all's going on at Murray State. No, we, we love the, the group of players we've been fortunate to bring in. I think our senior, Jonathan Stark, has really set the tone uh, for this year's team. Uh, but you look at guys like our freshman point guard, Ja Morant, uh, ju- junior college wing, we brought in Shaq Buchanan. They've really helped change our team and change our locker room. Uh, they're just two uh, talented, really hard-playing guys who are all about the team. Uh, they, they play both ends of the floor. They make the people around them better. Uh, so I'm just really, really excited about what, what those guys have been able to bring to our team and, and, and more importantly, to our program. So, Coach, we have been talking to a lot of college basketball coaches, and we've been um, noticing that there seems to be a heavy focus this year on uh, class, uh, basketball. Those they seem to be two themes that we see running through a lot of our conversations. Those seem to be prevalent in your program as well. Is there anything besides those two points that you focus on week to week or, or try to really pound into the, the players uh, to, to get them to focus on game? Well, I think – you hit on two huge ones, you know, take, taking care of the ball, value in the basketball. You can't afford to turn, turn the ball over at this level. And, you know, the rebounding battle is always really key. Uh, the majority of our time is, is spent at the defensive end of the floor. And we, we want to try to limit uh, easy baskets, uh, especially in transition. We want to refocus in on the three-point arc. And I feel like our guys have done, done that uh, really well for the most part this season. You know, it's, I'm sure every coach in America is saying they were trying, still trying to get a little more consistent. This, that, uh, I'd like the balance of our team uh, as we go down the home stretch here. Now, Coach, as you, as you mentioned, Coach, previously in previous response, that how this game, those national TV games, on the opportunity to struggle this program on Murray State. The Murray State to me is always the most perennial mid major teams. They always have to go to the tournament, win, 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 win the conference. So, to me, you're, you're a national brand right. to me. And just being able to get on TV again and see, you have the people see at Murray State again. Cameron Payne said, I can't even, her, her, unfortunately, got hurt. But how the tradition of Murray State of always good basketball, good players. So, talk about that program on TV. How does that feel you remember cream going forward with knowing that the guys can see what you guys all are about on TV here? And a home game as well coming up this Well, week. it's huge from a recruiting standpoint. And when, when the players see uh, the support that we get here at Murray State, that the stands are full every night, uh, that the atmosphere is, is, is electric in the building, the facilities are, are really uh, at an elite level. Uh, you know, and I think it really helps. You know, there have been a lot of uh, really, really good players that have come through here over the years, a lot of great teams. Uh, and you know, Coach Promo always talked about, you know, and it's so right, that the one consistent thing has always been the fan base uh, and the, the support that our players get, the uh, pride and passion uh, that our community in Murray, Kentucky have for Murray State basketball ranks right up there with anywhere in America. And, and so when our recruits get to see that, I think it really makes an impact. And Coach, you have a big game with Austin P. We talked about this week, and also SBI, you on swing as well. So, for Austin P. Coach, what are you going to do for prepare those guys? I know they, they play like open up basketball from what I've watched them a little bit, from what I've seen them on the little network. So, how you guys prepare for that old school game of basketball that Austin P. plays with the Coach? Well, man. really impressed with the job Coach Figure done uh, in establishing the culture he wants there. I think they're extremely hard, physical, they're impressive. Uh, I think that's reflected in two key stats their ability to, to dominate the offensive glass and their ability to force turnovers at the defensive end. Uh, so we know those to be two key areas. I think the other thing that really stands out, I think early in the season, you watch Austin P. really good defensive team. Uh, we're still finding themselves offensively. Well, I think they found themselves now. 
They're really efficient at that end of the floor. They're third in our league uh, in offensive efficiency, so playing well at both ends. So uh, we know it'll be a physical game. Uh, our guys will have to be really well prepared, uh, especially when you start talking about uh, their front court and just that Saturday, they 11 3. So uh, that, that, that type of balance makes them difficult to guard. Coach, you spoke to the, the level of preparedness that the, the team needs to have, not only uh, against your opponents this week, but seemingly every week, uh, you know, not only in non conference, but your, your conference, the OVC. Uh, it seems to me that, uh, you know, it's a challenging league to play in. I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit as far as the quality of teams, coaches, the league as a whole is, and, you know, uh, what it is about a league that you find most enjoyable that your players might find most enjoyable. Well, I think it is challenging from the standpoint of we're a Thursday, Saturday league. Uh, so your Saturday games are a quick turnaround. Uh, you got to be able to turn the page very quickly. And uh, the thing I've been most pleased about our team uh, this season is we've always been able to move on to the next most important thing. And I think that's really important. Our guys have never gotten too far ahead of themselves. Uh, continue to focus on whether it's just having a great practice that day or uh, moving on from a tough loss to the next game. Uh, guys have shown a lot of uh, maturity there. As, as for our league, you can go down to roster. There's a lot of really talented players in our league. You know, guys like Mayo, Eastern Kentucky, Dale Windler at, at Belmont, Jonathan Stark here at Murray State. And that could go on and on. These guys who could play anywhere in America. And so there's a lot of really talented players and coaches that make this league very competitive. Well, Coach McMahon, I'll tell you what, we'll definitely be watching this big game against you, Austin P. and yourself. We will be very neutral. We had you both on the show. We will be very neutral in that, in that regard. But we both love having you both on the show because you're all great. You're for us both. And love the confidence we have with you guys in your, in your program as well. We hope you'll be wearing navy and gold on Thursday night. Well, I'm always wearing uh, the cover Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be honest with you, I'm an Ohio State guy, so I don't ever really get into the, the Navy and gold too much. <laughs> I bet. I bet don't. <laughs> you both hey, 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 the guys with the OVC, I'm an OVC graduate, so we cover it. You know, we're all neutral here, both. I don't want to lose the We win either way, right? <laughs> no, well, I really appreciate you having, having us exactly. on. And, uh, look forward to a, a great game on Thursday night. Yes, indeed, Coach. Thank you for your time, always, Coach. Good luck with the talk to you real soon. Sounds great. Appreciate you having me on. Go Racers. Murray State, check him out. Murray State, Coachman, man, he's a great guy. Check him out on Twitter, folks. We're out now. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blueberry Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B L U B E R R Y, prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. 
Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. college basketball fans this is Donnie Tyndall former head basketball coach and we're getting ready to have a top three with Tyndall with JR the boss man and John myself as we analyze the college basketball season team by team break down stats and facts and give you all the basketball scoop across the country on a weekly basis we hope you'll join us and look forward to talking hoops with you on the boss man show can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. 